Today, our topic of discussion works into the arches and the types of arches that we have to use in different types of building when these arches act as a load bearing structure. So let's begin with that, what is an arch? Uh, arch is basically a structural member uh, having mechanical arrangement of wedge shaped bricks, stones or concrete blocks that are joined together with the motor and they form a curve. So this is the wedge shaped member uh, which is uh, a must component uh, for an arch but arch does not necessarily have to be a carved one, um, it can be a flat horizontal as well. Let's talk about uh, what are the different components of an arch because arch is supported by so many other um, members to make it a load bearing ones and they are mostly used when there is an opening in a wall or opening in a ceiling. So first part is the abutment. Abutments, these are the end support of one arch. For example, this is one arch. So these would be the end supports and this will be taken as abutments. And if we have a series of arches, like in this picture one, two, and three, in this case, the end ones will be termed as the abutments and will be termed as the end supports. And all the middle ones would be termed as piers. So any intermediate support in a series of arches is called a pier. Next is wozoirs. The wedge shaped element of the arch that forms an arch is called wozoir. So all of these wedge shaped members will be termed as wozoir. Then we have a key or a keystone. Out of all these wozoirs, the top central one would be termed as the key and this stone would be slightly bigger than the other wozoirs and termed as keystone. Intradose and extra dose. So the inner curve of the arch ring would be termed as intradose and the outer curve as shown here would be termed as extra dose. We have soffit. Soffit is the undersurface of an arch is called soffit. So here is an example in the picture. This is the continuity of a curved arch. So this will be the soffit and this arch is a straight one flat one and the underside of it would be termed as soffit. Crown. It is the highest point on the extra dose. It is just a point. It is just the imaginary point on the extra dose. Then we have springing points and springing line. These are the points from where the arch springs or starts. So here is the normal wall, this one and this one and from this point and this point, the arch starts to begin. So these points will be termed as arch springs or springing points. And then there is this imaginary line which joins the springing points is called the springing line. This will be termed as springing height that at what point the arch starts from the ground and this will be termed as crown height. This is the crown and this will be termed as crown height. Springer. Springer is the lowest first bozoir here as shown. There are always two springers in an arch. Then we have span. The horizontal distance between the supports of an arch is called its span yeah, the, or the horizontal distance between the springers or springing points is called the span. Rise, it's the vertical distance between springing line and the highest point on interdose. You must not confuse this rise with the crown height which is actually the vertical distance from the springing points till the highest point on the crown on the extra dose this is not the arch curve this is the continuity of the wall actually 
Next one is spandrel. This is this portion, this triangular portion between two adjacent arches and the line joining their crown is called spandrel. So you can say so you can say that this negative part here would be the spandrel if it's one a single arch and if it's a number of arch then the inner part inner negative space will be also be termed as spandrels and it is um, just like a triangle we have center of an arch then this is a geometric center from where the arch can be drawn so uh, at this stage we are not going to go in detail uh, how do we uh, design the center of an arch and how do we draft it but uh, i will give a little bit more explanation uh, when we will be studying the types of the arches okay now let's come to types of an arch so there are actually four types in which we can categorize arches material of construction shape or geometry function and then number of centers and all of these four uh, types are further subdivided into other uh, smaller categories with respect to the materials of construction we have brick arches stone arches or concrete arches this one is the brick one this is this this is the concrete arch and this is the stone arch so we can actually uh, identify the type of arch according to the type of material that we have used for its construction. Fourth one is timber and fifth is metal arches. This, these are the example of timber and this is the example of a metal arch. Then with respect to function we have more variety when we talk about um, the type of arches with respect to function. I have listed few of such arches here. Uh, so first one is relieving arch. It is an arch built over a lintel to relieve or distribute the weight of the wall above. It is also called a discharging arch. So this is an example of a relieving arch. Then we have inverted arch as shown in this picture. This is the regular arch, regular pointed arch and this is the inverted pointed one. An arch which is inverted in comparison to the usual arch is called inverted arch and the inverted arch is not used to support a load. Uh, it is not used to support the vertical load because as you can see in the picture this is all hollow so it's not supporting the wall here but the purpose of an inverted arch is that it resists the sideways weight, sideways load, the inwards load. So it is at this arch this arch is actually holding up the weight of this vertical wall above it and this inverted arch is actually resisting the load which is being exerted on it towards the sides from right side and from left side okay so the next one is tremor arch tremor arch is a very specific one that we usually make out of bricks and it's kind of a half segmental arch half arch and it is usually between a chimney and a header in a floor structure to support a hearth. A hearth is just like a fireplace. So this is a typical section of a tremor arch and this is how it looks in a plan. The last one with respect to function is the jack arch, the flat arch as you can easily see in this picture. So a jack arch is a structural element in masonry construction that provides support at openings in the masonry. Alternate names are flat arch and straight arch and unlike regular arches, jack arches are not semicircular in form. Instead, they are flat in profile and are used under the same circumstances as lentils. With respect to shape now, so first of all, um, Altogether, we have around 30 types of uh, arches that come under all of these four categories. But I have listed a few of them under all of uh, these types. So the first one here with respect to the geometrical shape is the round arch. It's an arch formed in a continuous curve and it was a characteristic of Roman architecture. So another important thing here about arches is that arches were developed along the development of different civilizations. So different eras have different types of arches according to their specific style. So we do find arches which are sole representatives of either Roman architecture or maybe Greek architecture or, or Gothic architecture. 
and then with the slide improvisions we have different types of arches uh, used in the in the islamic architecture next one is flat arch flat arch is actually the jack arch it's a spanning member constructed of mutually supporting bosars and having a straight or almost straight horizontal intra dose and extra dose so intra dose and extra dose both are straight here flat arch jack arch one and the same thing uh, segmented arch so it is used for buildings where the center of arch lies below the springing line so where is the springing line here the imaginary springing line and the center of this arch would be somewhere here so such an arch is termed as segmented arch in a segmental arch the thrust transfers in an inclined direction all the way to the abutment so there are two types of segmented arch one is the uh, semi-segmental arch like this and the other one is pointed segmented arch like this next one is horseshoe arch like its name suggests it is the arch uh, in which the horseshoe shape is dominant and it's um, that is more curved in a semicircle and we have again this is the three types so this so this is the basic type and we improvised in, into a rounded horse arch like this and a pointed horse arch like this parabolic arch as the name of this arch suggests that this arch is shaped like a parabola and they are used in bridges cathedrals and many other areas in both engineering and architecture Next type with respect to geometrical shape is trefoil arch. It is also called a three-foiled cusped arch. And it is an arch that incorporates the outline or shape of a trefoil. So these are the three overlapping rings that make a trefoil arch. Um, we have again two types of trefoil arches here. One is the round one and the other one is the pointed one. So this type of trefoil arch was a very uh, significant symbol in Christian architecture. Last one with respect to the geometrical shape is the rampant arch. A rampant arch is one in which the support is higher on one side other than the other side. This is asymmetrical kind of arch. So one support is high, like the springing points are not um, in aligned with each other. The springing line is a bit inclined. One support is low and the other support is high. So this is called a round rampant arch. It can be a pointed rampant arch as well. Now let's talk about uh, the type of arches with respect to the number of centers. So we do find arches having one center to five centers. Now, but at this level, we are going to study only three, three center arches. First one is the one centered arch. In that case, it has only one center. So segmental arch or semicircular arch or flat arch and horseshoe arches, they all come under this category this is the one center and it is equal the radius is same you, as you can see and the diameter is same too so this is one center arch uh, two center arches the curved surface of these arches makes from two center points examples of two center arches is equilateral pointed lancet and venetian arches we have not studied in detail what are these type of arches because these are the two centered ones so we are not going in the detail now but uh, the two centers mean that making this arc and this arc we have taken two centers one center is here the other center is here we are going to make one circle and from this center we are going to mark another circle so that's how we make a two center arch so in this case in the lens this is the equilateral arch because uh, the internal triangle that it forms it is equilateral all three sides are equal this is the lancet arch in which the centers are outside the springing points this is if this is the springing point the center is over here and then again through a certain procedure we are going to mark these arcs and then in venetian arch the centers are actually inside the springing points or they fall on the springing line inside here 
and then we come up with this type of uh, two centered Venetian arch. Last one is with respect to three center. The curved surface of these arches is made from three center points. So the example um, example of three central arches are ogee, drop, and elliptical arches. Uh, these ones we also haven't studied. This is just for the information so that you can remember the names. So this is uh, this figure here is the type of arch called pseudo ellipse. So there are three center points here. This center point with this center point we are going to draw this circle from this center point we are going to draw this circle and from this center point this bigger circle has been drawn and eventually we come up with this pseudo ellipse arch this type of arch so that is all about the introduction to arches